I am the doctor, this is my section. Earth is under my protection. Planet of birth is Gallifrey. I've got two hearts, your life is safe. Run into the master raw messy. Come on, Alonzo. Alonzo. I am a time lord. No, I'm not rich. Twelve bodies of men. Now it's time for a switch. Don't look like that. I'm in great health. You were expecting someone else. Regeneration. Oh, such fun. When I say run, run, run. What's up, my boy? Peace and sanity. Sorry, I must dash. Reverse the polarity. Sometimes I'm north, but always a limey, wibbly, wobbly, timey, wimey. Jump in the TARDIS, go for a ride, it's bigger on the inside. Exploring all of time and space, oh what's that? Exterminate. Cyberman or Daleks maybe? Would you like a jelly baby? Time's ticking, we'd best go, a new adventure, Geronimo! I am fantastic, so are you, best come with me, I'm Doctor Who. Oh. Welcome to a brand new episode of D4WH. I am your host. I only require a small investment of $50,000. I'm Adam O'Sullivan. <laughs> Joined as always by my co-host, she will take everything. It's Nikki Ashut. That's right. I will take everything. Because we always say the bad is <laughs> they everything just to take camera. a little bit, do they? They never take their fair share. They take no. it all. That's me. I'm taking it all, baby. <laughs> they don't just say, I'll have one fry. They say, I will take everything off your plate. Yeah. I mean, don't get it myself. But anyway, I guess that's what's making you baddie. <laughs> Too bad if you're eating soup. <laughs> so I'll just take a <laughs> mouth. <laughs> Please welcome our guest. You just heard him then. Keep this to yourself or people will say that you're as crazy as Tesla. Please welcome Dooney. Hi. How's Hello. it going? Yeah. Thank you for joining cool. us. Thanks. Thanks hey, for having Hey, Dooney. Me. I'm very pleased to finally have you. Why? You're what I would consider the quintessential Aussie. We now have our quintessential Aussie <laughs> with dulcet tones on our podcast. Thank you, Nikki. It's and, great and to see you. Boom, boom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm looking and, and we're recording on the Australia Day long weekend. So yeah, that's true. Quintessential Australian for Australia, Australia Day long weekend. I actually like that um, description. It's much be better than, you know, oh, the bogan. <laughs> so, yeah, I like the quintessential Aussie. That's <laughs> good. I like the distinction. I would consider you a bogan, that's No, that's sure. right. Use yeah, that as a direct you. quote, you yep, know, for the to. comedy. <laughs> quintessential The quintessential Aussie. Australian with the dulcet tone. <laughs> Before we start, Dooney, do you want to just go out, give us a rundown of your history with Doctor Who? My history? Okay. Uh, oh. Were you aware of Doctor <laughs> Who? Do- Had you ever with seen Doctor Who, it? not other types of history, okay? We, we, we don't In need that In the beginning, that there was Doctor Who. <laughs> Let's go back. No, my quick, it's going to be a pretty, I was thinking about it, you know, yeah. my history. And I watched the episode this morning, mostly, most, most of it. Most of it. Was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> was in between when I had it. Anyway, so if you only watch the first the five minutes, changed. Dooney, it's going to be a short podcast. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. No, no, I think I've got the gist. I said <laughs> through a couple <laughs> of bits. It. And Hopefully. This might be the closest we get to someone not watching the episode. to get it working in my computer and stuff. Anyway, but the, yeah, and then I was like, oh, that's right. The doctors have been changing. I haven't yeah. kept up. But when I was a kid, I do remember the doctor with the big eyes. And the scarf. Tom Baker. He would have been the one. I'd, Tom Baker. Tom Baker. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I, I was looking for it. He was. He was pretty cool. Mm. But I, I recall people saying how they were afraid of um, the the baddies and all that sort oh, yeah. of thing. Yeah, the Daleks. And, and... Um, I can't recall having any of that. Mm-hmm. But because, like, at the age where I, I was able to see it, sometimes. Most of the time, though, that was like towards the end of the day. It would be getting dark and so I'd always have to be um, feeding animals or doing my cho- my jobs and stuff. So, right, right. And I, and I always, uh, though, um, lost uh, – I, I got distracted easily in Doctor Who for some reason. <laughs> it was funny. It was weird. Like I could, I could sit down. <laughs> it just – I don't know if I – I don't know. I didn't – I liked the storylines but, yeah, I um, – so I must admit I didn't stick with it. And I didn't, yeah, realise it was right. such That's a fine. big thing. Well, thank you for watching most yeah. of this episode for today. Nikola, Nikola Tesla. Nikola Tesla, uh, yeah. The room, I wrote the episode name down even because I wanted <laughs> to remember it. Well, Dooney, oh, you're ahead. No. Night of Terror. Night of, there it is. Night of Terror. There it is. I wrote it down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you know the title. We're already I'll get the name it. right. I'll get the name right. <laughs> All right, well, I'll let you uh, run this sweating. episode. And speak, speak, a, speak, uh, up, speak up, speak up. Uh, speak up. It's a long way to Canberra. <laughs> So I'd hate to be a Doctor Who villain. It's a uh, <laughs> these rules. Yeah, touch no, I was the table, say, villain. I said we should have like a big thing of rules, like for guests. Before we get into the episode, we're going to give it a D whirl with Doctor Who in real Ooh. life. This week's episode featured 
guest actor Anjali Mahindra as Queen of the Skithra. Mahindra previously appeared on the spin-off The Sarah Jane Adventures as Rani Chandra, one of the main characters from season two onwards. This is, however, her first appearance on the main Doctor Who show and obviously as a different character. Now, according to both Bradley Walsh and Mahindra, there was some awkwardness when Walsh didn't recognise her underneath all her prosthetics and makeup, Mm -hmm. which is understandable considering what what she looked like. Even her her teeth had prosthetics on them. Oh, really? Were they prosthetics? I thought they were her real teeth. Yeah. Well, they were. They were real well. (laughs) They filed filed them down. down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, into like uh, devil horns teeth. <laughs> During the initial press for series 12, Walsh told the story before the actress involved had been announced, although the rumours were that it was Mahindra after she updated her online acting CV saying she was on the show months before the BBC announced her involvement. And that's how we find out how most people are on the show. They up, they, they get very excited, update their online CV and then go, oh shit, someone noticed, I better take it down. You wonder if they don't sack people when they do that because they're so, you know, there's a lot, you think they've got a lot of rules in our podcast, Dooney. If you were on Doctor Who, there'd be a billion more rules. I, re- I reckon the episodes would have been filmed by then. Like they, would, they wouldn't have, would have put it up after they would have filmed, mm, I would say. Maybe. Well, as I, I think with all those rules though, wouldn't it be something the Doctor would say, well, rules are for fools and the guidance of wise men. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Boom. Right. Hey. Boom. <laughs> Got that real writer. <laughs> <laughs> High five. Oh, so, hasn't so been invented yet. If- <laughs> <laughs> but now that the episode has aired, Mahindra has been quoted as saying, he didn't recognise me as I was under three hours of prosthetics. It was hilarious because he sort of introduced himself to me and I thought he was joking. She thought he was playing a prank and goes on to say, I, I think an entire day had passed before he said, you're going to have to show me a picture of what you look like because I'll probably pass you in the street at some point and have no idea. And it was at that point I was like, oh, he really didn't, he, he really hasn't twigged. Yeah, because yeah, he so was he in the Sarah Jane Adventures no. with her, wasn't he? He was a guest star. Yeah, so the guy who played Graham, the, the old guy, he, he was in an episode with the woman who was the main... Oh, the Skith... The yeah, Skithra yeah, queen. Skith- yeah, the Scorpion Lady. Scorpion yeah, Lady, with yeah. Teeth. With no, like, prosthetics around her eyes. It was yeah. a little bit weird. <laughs> like, what? full-on prosthetics, but then, like, full gaps. Like not even a... Paint or anything. I was going to say like a contact or something. When she acted as well, I, I did I did notice that. I was like, man, that must be so hardcore. The way she spoke, everything was like so expressive, yeah. like her whole face and showing those fangs off all Too the time. to be a visual medium. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I recognise <laughs> yeah, like... let's explain it. It's... When, when, she's in, what... uh, when she's in the tower, like talking to them, she's got a very English accent. She's like, hello, love. <laughs> I'm the queen of the skinra. In it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to stop you, mate. I think she looked like she was having was a ball. Like she's arrived at Botany Bay. Oh, she was chewing the scenery. Yeah, yeah. But she did have. Well, I would say she did have good entrance music. Good oh theme yeah. Song. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I really yeah. Enjoyed yeah. the music. Yeah. And all that. It was like a s- cacophony of a symphony. When they it's revealed a, the alien scorpion yeah. ship, that was, yeah, was great like, music and also very, very creepy for someone mm. who doesn't like bugs. Very creepy. Yeah. It made me think. You know, what got? What do you, would you guys have? Because I've I've had this discussion before with people. That what would theme song would you have if you just could have a theme play wherever you turned up? Which one? Mm, that's interesting. Maybe that could be my question for you to mull over for the rest <laughs> oh, of the episode and give us right, an answer. You'll have to repeat it because all I, I heard was. Me. Me. Yeah. Yeah, what was it? What was it? <laughs> we uh, have to Nikki, listen up, Nikki. Nikki. Yeah. What? Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> good on you. <laughs> what song would you choose if you could have it play every like like your theme song or your entrance oh, music okay. whenever you go somewhere? What would your song be? You know, right. like when the Skithra when she came, it was like you know all the music. The people listening to this would have watched the episode, yeah, yeah, so they know yeah, what I mean. Yeah. yeah. So, and what song would yours be? Oh, I like that. Okay, well, you don't when, have we, an when we do your yet? Time Lord name. Oh, I, my yeah. first answer yeah. is oh, Queen's what? Fat Bottom Girls. But I'll, <laughs> you don't worry, we'll get there. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> More Our, co- I've got the que- I've written my answer. No, no, yeah, we, we, do it at the, we do it at the end. But at the end oh, we also right. ask you for a Time Lord name. That'll, okay. That's easy. Don't worry. You'll, we'll get there. It's all right. Oh, it, good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, he's scared <laughs> that we're going to ask him questions. He's it's like, like fuck it, sign up for it's this. It's Saturday morning, man. What's it's your like Medicare exam. number? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> it's like my Doctor Who ID. Is that what you're asking? Yep. Our episode today is Nikola Tesla's Night of Terror, Season 12, 
episode four, written by Nina Medavir and directed by Nida Manzua. Oh, both have the initials NM. Man, that's a lot of vowels. Yeah. Originally aired on the BBC Saturday, January, January 19th, 2020. That's the word that you're having trouble with yes, now? That's January? that's the word I had. January. January. Uh, we start with a short synopsis. The Doctor and the Hoobie Gang are in New York at the turn of the 20th century, where they meet Nikola Tesla and Thomas Edison. But a scavenger race of alien scorpions are hunting Tesla, and it's up to the Doctor to make sure that the Scythra doesn't and take away one of Earth's greatest inventors. Being Nikola Tesla. Nikola Tesla, yeah, correct. Yeah. Or, you know, Thomas Edison. I have a question yeah. already. You, you said how this one takes place at the turn of the century. Yes. I'm wondering how many Doctor Who's are set before the Industrial Revolution. Is uh, there many? Or yeah, any? yeah, there are, because Is there? kings like and queens of England, or... Elizabeth oh, okay. I, Victoria, Queen Victoria. Yeah, there's yeah, some I would, in the I would pagan actually say times. that there are more episodes set... There are more episodes set in the Victorian era of England than there would be at the turn of the century. Yeah, okay. the, the first episode... Oh, the second episode of Doctor Who period. ever was in the Stone Age. Yeah. But usually it's the cool. future the future or the present. <laughs> Stone Age cowboys. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. I'll have slingshots. <laughs> riding around on like little uh, square wheels. <laughs> oh, I was going to say riding around <laughs> on a rat tour. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, I guess I've got I my next it. idea for our next touring then. <laughs> cowboy on a rat tour. Yeah, a caveman cowboy riding around on a T-Rex. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right, let's address the elephant in the room. What did everyone know about Nikola Tesla before coming into this episode? Did Looking you know? at me, yeah. I'll be honest, I just I heard the word and thought of the car. Yeah. Oh, okay. That was it. Much like That's Graham. Yeah. Pretty, yeah, I, yeah. I was same, looking Nikia. forward to Yeah, I was the same. The I mean, I knew that. Edison and I knew a lot about him, but and I'd heard the name you know, Nicholas Tes- Tesla, but I had no I had no idea of variety of things he'd invented or started. Absolutely incredible. That's so funny because I knew pretty much everything about him. <laughs> I am a huge nerd on the because internet. Because you're a nerd. He yeah. is the poster boy of the internet. Uh, and I thought everyone, I thought everyone knew no. about Nikola Tesla. I was very surprised. Oh this my past god, week, Doctor Who out. is too focused on giving us all a history lesson. Yeah, much like uh, it was created to do. Yeah. See, I like felt I like I felt like I learned I something him. without feeling like Isn't I was this getting what we're doing? PowerPoint. Yeah, basically. <laughs> I felt like I was learning something without getting a PowerPoint presentation or having it shoved down my throat. I thought it did what Doctor Who does best, which is you learn something, but you're also entertained. That that was my my take on it. I, I didn't realise the guy that was going to be sending people to Mars in a couple of years, like invented, you know, electricity and the internet and <laughs> all that sort of all stuff. All right, well let's get the let's get the uh, the the company out of the way. He has nothing to do with that company. Uh, in fact, on the Tesla website, it says that Elon Musk is one of the co-founders, which he isn't. He's <laughs> two not. guys, yeah, two guys started the company, and then he kind of came in very soon after they started. But technically, you know, called they, himself they call the him, founder. Well, they, he calls himself ah. a co-founder. So a co-founder, but he so was it's like really a McDonald's a... vibe. You know? Yeah, 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 basically, yeah. So, yeah, someone else started the company, but he, then he made it big, made it huge. But Whirl- Whirlpool Tesla used so some of Tesla's in. inventions, didn't they? Yeah, Westinghouse. Yep. Oh, Westinghouse, that's it. Oh, well, guess who mum, whose mum's got a Westinghouse It was turn of the Whirlpool. century, so you had to have a rich guy backing you otherwise. And, and Edison basically was his own rich guy because he became rich very fast. Well, and uh, also and, and Edison, Edison took other people's ideas and made them happen. Which is how he became a rich guy. Yeah, yeah I mean. He's a capitalist. Yeah, he took other people's ideas and made them marketable and profitable and in such a way. Like he technically did invent the first light bulb, but he was taking other people's ideas and making it something that you could put in every home. I also didn't realise he was such an asshole. Tesla did some research into x-rays and realised that they were dangerous, so he stopped doing testing into x-rays. Edison basically got his men to study x-rays and then a whole bunch of them died from cancer. So Yeah, yeah so. although... <laughs> What a guy. <laughs> I like the fact that Edison, although he is he's not the most lovable guy, you do see he's not one dimensional in this. You do see that he cares about a worker's dying. But yeah, he's he's the quintessential capitalist. A bit cruel, but he did what he did to make money. The most famous story of the two of them is Tesla heard Edison saying he would give fifty thousand dollars to the person who could perfect his DC generator. Tesla worked on it for a year, got it to work, and then Edison turned around and said well, I'm sorry, my man, but you don't understand American humour. Yeah, he said that. That's the famous story between the two of them. Yeah, that, I was amazed that that was a true story. 
Because that's cruel. Well, I mean, you know, it might not have been Edison who said that. It might have been somebody else. He might have, it might have actually been a joke taken the wrong way because $50,000 back then was, was is one and yeah. a half million in today's money. And the company didn't have that money. So why would they actually offer it to somebody for, you know? Yeah, apparently Edison was well known for being quite stingy with his pay. Oh, yeah, definitely. Which is how he got rich. And if it wasn't for the two of them, they may, they may not have um, sparked creation of the greatest rock and roll band in the world. Well, yes, that's exactly. right. Okay, ACDC. That's pretty cool. Yes. I thought oh, that was cool. If they didn't have their <laughs> angst and problems with each other, uh, we may never be sitting around bouncing our heads to thunderstruck. Exactly. Edison, Edison and Tesla don't like each other, but neither of them had anything to do with the creation of ACDC. <laughs> oh, oh I've just been shut down. No, no, I'm, saying, I'm, I'm agreeing oh, with you. I'm agreeing with you. But do you know how ACDC got their name? No. Yeah, there is a good story. I'm trying it was, to remember. It was on, it was on uh, one, of their, one of the band members. His sister had a sewing machine, and on the bottom of the That's sewing right. machine, it said ACDC, and so they thought that was really cool. So <laughs> there would have been a lot of stuff during the mid, like as more and more stuff, yeah. like fridges El- and stuff, electronics, and electronics stuff, yeah. things were built. They would have had both forms of power going into them, eh? Oh yeah, definitely. So both units of power are used today. So yeah. if you use a laptop. That brick that plugs into the wall and then plugs into your computer. AC is really good at getting over long distances. It's a lot more powerful. So it gets over long distances really well. So the stuff that comes out of the wall is AC and the stuff that goes into your computer is DC. Right. Ah, so it's not to fry your computer, obviously. Yeah, exactly. So anything that plugs directly into the wall is AC. Things like batteries are DC, but a, a laptop uses both because it has to grab energy from the power grid, but then it also has to put that energy into a battery, which is DC. Basically got a converter in that box. Like yeah. That, yeah. You imagine what we would be doing now if someone had invested in Tesla's ideas. Well, that's the thing. His idea for Wardenclyffe was like off the charts crazy. Mm. And and basically the banker JP Morgan was initially invested in it but then pulled the money because he basically couldn't see how it was going to make a profit. Initially Tesla had designed Wardenclyffe to transmit radio, telegraphs, images all around the world. Meanwhile, there was another guy called Marconi who was doing the same thing. So they were kind of fighting with each other. So then Tesla goes, okay, well, I'm going to upgrade Wardenclyffe to provide wireless energy to everybody, electricity to everybody. And then JP Morgan was like, well, I don't see how you can make money out of that and I'm, I'm pulling out. What an idiot. Yeah, but if someone had had the vision to see what he saw, we could have been in an, an amazing technological age now. Yeah, there could be Tesla towers all over the world. People talk about how he was inventing a, a death ray or a death beam, he called it. He invented the first uh, remote-controlled boat, which he was hoping would, would be used by the military as tel- a torpedoes and stuff. I know. It's it's just incredible. All the stuff that you look at he was working on inventing is now out there, most of it, except for death rays as far as I know. <laughs> it kind of seems if, like a few capitalists just got his ideas and a, a few they sort of split them up amongst themselves and went and became mega rich. It was the inventions that people couldn't see how they were going to make yeah. them mega rich that they went, okay, well, we're we'll, out. We'll, we'll and, be out. And the doctor's and, right. He died penniless. Yeah. He, he died basically um, moving from a hotel to hotel right Racking up huge debts, then not being able to pay them and moving to the next hotel. It's really sad, but they say he was a very poor businessman, and I guess that's true. He was a genius at his craft, but a um, no good at the hustle. But he's played beautifully by um, what's the guy's oh. name? Oh, that isn't guy. He, isn't he done? Goran. Goran no. Vinacek. Yep. Gesundheit. I don't know his last name. My God, his acting is so. He looked good in a suit, beautiful. though. I loved yeah. it. I, I loved thought it was it. really, really subtle. Like there's moments of. Of the the grandiose uh, Tesla, but then there's moments of like he's questioning himself. Yeah, I thought he did a really good job. Yeah, so did um, Robert Geisner as Edison. I thought I thought they were both really yeah, good. We had yeah. good guest think, stars this week. I think everyone in this episode did really well. Yeah, I mean, I I understand they had Dorothy Skerritt there, who was his secretary, but she probably didn't need to be there. Dorothy Skerritt was the normal person who was like, oh my god, isn't Tesla amazing? Because I don't think Tesla was was big on uh, fighting his own battles, so. Yeah, you could tell she was there to try and get him the, the money, but, he, you know, you start talking about Martians, people people run a mile. I agree, though, the way you just described that. It did come across like that in the episode. He wasn't real big on confrontation, yeah. and if mm. someone questioned his integrity, he was like, 
you can't say that. You know, there'd be no flaw in my design. Like, he was so proud and genius of that. When Marconi did the first test of sending a radio wave from America to England, someone basically said to him, well, it looks like, you know, there's no point you researching it anymore. And Tesla said, I like Marconi. He's a great guy. He's using 17 of my patents. Ooh. So he was, he, was an, he was a nice guy, basically. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I thought the acting was just superb and I loved the script, I loved the scenery. I I was there from the beginning. I was quite transfixed. just want to point out that the real Dorothy Skerritt probably didn't join Tesla until 1912. Anyway. <laughs> Does it matter? <laughs> okay, all right. These things happen with time travel, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a bit. These things happen. All right. It is 1903 and Nikola Tesla is presenting to a group of potential investors at the Niagara Falls Power Plant, the world's first hydroelectric plant. And he actually beat out Edison for the design. I have a question. Yes. I've got Because as yes. you say, it's going to bring questions up. That's fine. How yeah. was he presenting with, um, it looked like Niagara Falls right behind him and then the next thing he's in the lab? Tell me. Well, the, 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 the generator is right on Niagara Falls, basically. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's what, okay. It's yeah, Jenny, 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 I think they walked they had a, they from had an Niagara Falls to the lab. Right Crazy idea. Back to the lab right there. Yeah. <laughs> no, that okay. building we see at the start, I think they went inside right. and then okay. they just stopped doing the sound of the, the water because <laughs> it would have been, been annoying, annoying after yeah. a while. Is yeah. that plant still there? No, it got ripped No, down. it was got pulled down. I read that. There is a, there is another hydroelectric plant, but it's a little bit further away from the falls and basically takes water from the falls and then puts it back in. Tesla shows off his Tesla coil, perhaps his most famous invention. Had you seen those before, the Tesla coils? Oh. No. I had, yeah. At the 2011 Maker Fair in San Francisco, art installation group Arc Attack used two giant Tesla coils to play the Doctor Who theme oh. with Adam Savage from Mythbusters. In the middle in a Faraday cage. That's pretty cool. So you can, people have designed it so that the sparks generate noise and they, they do use it to play music. I'm sorry, how is Adam Savage not dead yet? Like, he, he is like such a <laughs> He's dead He's burnt old. off his eyebrows so many yeah. times. <laughs> <laughs> and yet the other guy is the one that hasn't got the eyebrows. I can't remember what that guy's name is. Uh, Jamie. Big, Jamie. Yeah, yeah. With the big mo. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, just the travel down from no. his forehead yeah, yeah. to his, to his upper lip. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one of the investors mentions that Tesla has received a transmission from Mars. Tesla really did receive a feeble electrical signal f on his radio receiver in 1899 and was convinced for the rest of his life that it was a signal from Mars. Did they ever actually prove where it was from? No, but uh, yeah, it was one of the first uh, deep space... Uh, radio messages that they received. Oh. Tesla investigates a noise and sees a green glowing floating orb which he pockets. He instantly wins 150 points for finding the snitch and wins a Quidditch match for Slytherin. Woohoo! Always a good thing. <laughs> you don't like that? No. Harry Potter reference? No. I missed it. I was here going, I don't remember. <laughs> it looks like, no, no, it looks like, a, it looks like the golden snitch from that, the uh, Yeah, when Potter, they yeah. chase it. Yeah, 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 yeah. okay, now I'm with A you. shadowy figure shoots at the doctor but is then killed by a green burst of energy. The shadowy figure is Mr. Brady, one of the potential investors. So why was he skulking around Tesla's plant in the middle of the night? Uh, hasn't he been taken over? No, because he shoots at the doctor with a normal gun oh. and then the other guy gets shot with a green thing. Oh, I have no beam. idea. We, that's you know never when, um, explained. I was a bit confused was... as to who was shooting who, but... I assumed it was the baddies. So did I. Edison, Edison says later on he has someone who's keeping tabs on Tesla, but I would have thought that was the foreman, not mm. Mr. Brady, because Mr. Brady would have only been there for like half a day or something and then would have would have had to leave because he was trying to be an investor. Mm, maybe he wanted yeah, the patent. It, it, uh, it look, the, before the shooting happened, you know when he first heard the noise and he was walking around yeah. and, and there was that shot of him going into a door and then there was a shadow in the distance. Yeah, and I you saw don't that. know who it is. And the next thing, his assistant popped up next to him and you're like, oh, is she the shadow yeah, just catching yeah. up? And, I, and I, I never really figured out who it was until then someone was coming down the stairs after they were being... Yeah, I don't know, I don't know who that was. It was the... Bananas in pajamas. Bananas in pajamas, but they slide Bananas down the stairs. Down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Did they pay the ABC to Shit. use that? Shit. We, we haven't paid the ABC to use that. <gasps> oh no! Oh, dun, no. Dun, dun. Go with apples in boxes, <laughs> in boxer shorts. Then <laughs> I thought you just meant apples in boxes, like boxes of <laughs> no, apples. No. Here you go, kids. Watch that for half an hour. <laughs> apples with bapples. <laughs> Pears in nineties are coming down. This. <laughs> <laughs> Pairs and negligees. Yeah. <laughs> I love we'll to the, add uh, that to my list of drawing. Love problems. the doctor <laughs> bumbling in. Very Matt oh, Smith yes, with a, a lamp on her head. Yeah, 
Yeah, that was good. She oh, sort of really? turns up and she's like, I love the way she calls him a big fat liar. Yes. Mm. <laughs> the doctor helps Tesla and Scarrett escape and they meet up with Graham, Yaz and Ryan on the night train headed directly to New York. Can I ask, where's the TARDIS? Yeah, the, I was Who really cares? confused by that. Why? I, I didn't know. How did they get to the train? They obviously didn't yeah. take the so TARDIS. Initially- yeah, I'm glad you just brought that up because I was sitting there going, "Did they?" she yeah. said, oh, I'm someone with a quick way out of here. Yeah. Didn't she? Something yeah. like that. And then, yeah. then they go through a doorway yeah. and then they're on this train yeah, I'm like yeah. was that initially I the... thought that she had used the TARDIS to take them onto the train but then that doesn't work because later on Tesla has never seen the TARDIS before she disengaged the carriages so the TARDIS would have been in one so of them so they've gone from the front of Niagara Falls into the lab without any sort of seeing me because it's confusing in normal walking, shows you would just go Dooney. you know but then they've also run from the bottom of the lab that seems to be the to basement a level <laughs> to, to a, a train, train yeah, without yeah. snow and if it, if it was a normal program you'd assume walking but because of how doctor who works i am even thinking is that did they just shoot through yeah, like yeah. you'd never know That's <laughs> and then she goes to her companions before. like see i told you there'd be a train yeah as if she gets on the train and she's like fuck yeah. they didn't catch the train oh shit it was the orient express didn't graham say i don't think it was yeah. actually no i think he was being sarcastic facetious facetious travel in style in the in a in like an industrial like in a goods trolley or something i think maybe they were visiting new york and then decided to take a train to niagara falls like that train trip would take like anywhere from four to twelve hours based on my calculation that's a good calculation mate four to twelve that's like a two-third variance <laughs> yeah. well no the, yeah. on the whole thing four, that's an four. my calculations you know? of how, when i would get here today sometime between eight <laughs> okay, and nine well, tonight if it was if it was directly <laughs> like if it was as the crow flies from niagara falls to new york wasn't it a pigeon why are we on the, <laughs> cro- pigeon, yeah, we're on the crows as now the pigeon Flies. <laughs> uh, based on the speed of a steam train, it would be four hours. But if it, if it takes if it takes the uh, the route that a modern train takes, which goes through a bunch of cities uh, a roundabout way, modern train like someone modern train who's would take about nine hours. So I added in a, a couple of hours. Yeah. Isn't it? yeah, a couple of hours. If a modern train is going to take nine hours, where do you get four? From? Four as the crow, crow flies. Ah, oh, okay. The, are we, other, are the we other flying modern by train crow? goes goes no. Well, if they had a train line going directly from Niagara Falls to New York City, okay. I don't know if they did back then. This but sounds today, like a math a math problem a that I I got in high school. If a train and is I going, spent half how an many hour watermelons looking? are involved in this mathematical equation? One, which I've brought, and you're in the splash zone, so you're going to need to put on your uh, your uh, raincoat. Uh, I'm going to smash in your face. <laughs> what? Oh my god! Just, uh, it just got uh, nasty. Just, there's a bit of tension, there. and it's too hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to jump in yeah. with a new, uh, a new <laughs> something new to ponder. Is okay. We're talking about trains now. I, w- I want to know. Is I wonder how long, or we could calculate how long it would take <laughs> one of these new tests vehicles that can auto drive with some clown in it watching porn from Niagara Falls to New York. That would be an interesting calculation. That Elon Musk, can you please get in contact enough. with us? Yeah. Come on, Elon. <laughs> yeah, come on, Elon. We need you for we scientific We know you listen purposes. to the show. You've got this all you figured out, mate. He went on Joe Rogan's podcast, so yeah. he'll, go, he'll, he'll go on our podcast. Yeah, we'll, oh, be, of on, course. we'll be on Joe Rogan's podcast next week. Oh, yeah, the most listened to podcast ever. Yeah. <laughs> they get attacked and the doctor picks up the gun and she finds out it's a Silurian blaster or as Graham calls it, a Slime Lurian laser blaster. <laughs> It's a bit like Donna with the Sontars, not Sontarans. No, he just couldn't pronounce it. Oh, because he couldn't pronounce it. Because I will admit when she first said that, I was like, I've got no idea what's that mean or is that supposed to be? But then as we later find out what happened, it yeah, sort of makes sense. Yeah, I think sense. that's just Doctor Who. She's like very a lot of made up words. Technical. It's a funny thing because in this know. episode she throws out a lot of names of like, oh, that's a thing, that's a thing, that's a thing. And some of them are like we have seen previously in the series, but others are just completely made up. <laughs> yeah, well, the Silurians have been around since the third Doctor. Oh, yeah, probably the third Doctor, I think. So... They've been along around since the 60s. And which one's this one? This is the 13th Doctor, or technically the 15th well, Doctor. I have missed a few. Oh, yeah, right. Tom Baker was the fourth. <laughs> Tom Baker okay. was the fourth, yeah. He was the actual fourth as Just well. Just as a little side tangent yeah. thing, was Walder Frey a Doctor at some point? Do you know Walder Frey in Game of Thrones? What was his name? Oh, yes. oh yeah, yeah, he, he played did. the first Doctor in a dramatisation about the first episode. A dramatisation about the first episode. Yeah, so okay. when the, on, for the 50th Man. anniversary, they did a special episode, basically like this the is making how the first of. episode got made. He was the actor who played William Hartnell, the guy who played the first Doctor, and then he did so well at that they brought him back a number of times to play. 
the first time. Ah, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. I've so yeah, I've seen something and I was like, I oh, know Walter Frey's been in yeah. it somehow. Yeah, he has, yeah, yeah. He has been in it, yeah. yeah. Absolutely everyone that you know has been, has been in Doctor Who. Pretty much. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like the, it's like the um, UK version of uh, Law and Order. Like every actor oh, is, yeah, yeah. is eventually on Law and Order. Yeah, or right. Neighbours or Home and Away. Yeah, or EastEnders or Coronation so Street. Coronation platform. Street or, or one of those. Yeah, <laughs> 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 unsolved cases. Uh, in, <laughs> in turn of the century, New York, outside Tesla's lab, are protesters of Tesla's AC generator. Now, Edison would conduct public experiments where he would electrocute animals with AC power to show that it was too dangerous for people to have in their homes. God, he was a cat wow. and a bounder. Yep. yep. Electrocuting Pigeons. Oh. Not just That's pigeons. Right. He, electro- he electrocuted an elephant. <laughs> Holy what? moly. He usually, did dogs and, he usually did dogs and cats uh, and then moved on to cows. But there was a elephant at the New York Zoo who had crushed three of its trainers. Oh, like it's gone. Yeah, and so they, they decided they were going to uh, execute it, basically. And so he said, let me do it. I'll do it. It's more humane. Edison helped uh, devise the first electric chair oh, wow. using oh. AC power. Because, Lovely. Yeah, he said, he what a lovely it was guy! Very dangerous. Yeah, we just we we want to build Capitalist, a chair to kill they people. All have oh, the need. Yeah, yeah, I'll be yeah. up for that. Yeah, they yeah. said it was more humane, and it was not. <laughs> they switched it on for two minutes, and yeah. the guy was still alive. So and then they cooking. they switched it on, and basically after four minutes, his hair was on fire. <gasps> oh my god! It was fucked. It's such it's Man. oh it's so brutal, isn't it? Oh god! And that would have <laughs> happened to this poor old elephant and had countless pigeons. Oh, and it was dogs filmed too. It was filmed and then released as a as a movie the old, the like, time. silent film what, films. The, what, the Man. elephant one? Oh, my God. Yeah. And with that, Tesla whips out his glowing green ball. Hmm, probably <laughs> should probably get that checked out. <laughs> but it was very shiny. <laughs> it was very shiny. He's it, been giving it a shine. <laughs> <laughs> It's got tons of energy, don't you know? I've heard of the term blue balls, but not green. <laughs> That's when they get mouldy. That's on a different level. That's when you have blue balls for so long, they get mouldy. <laughs> oh. So when you fall in love with a pigeon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, it's an orb of Thassa meant to carry stories across, across the galaxy. However, it has been modified to collect information. Tesla and the Doctor share a moment over seeing the world differently to other people. I was shipping them. Oh, you want Tesla and the Doctor to hook up? Yeah. I thought he was just really, after so long feeling so alone and imprisoned, like, as we said, he, you know, he formed a relationship with a pigeon, like, because everyone was like, oh, you, you know, you're crazy to him all the time. That then finally someone comes along who's an inventor. He's like, "Oh, you get it. Yes. You get it. I <laughs> who's can talk your pigeon? to you." Are these yeah. three people yeah. your pigeon? Right. Yeah, I know, but point. this doctor's Maybe very asexual, isn't she? Yeah, there's nothing. Uh, I would say it's sexy ab- in this about the well, they try not to make it because mm. then it would give all the yeah. But Tennant's doctor the... was sexy. Oh yeah, definitely. And there's that moment at the end of the episode where Tesla gets saved, and him and uh, Miss Garrett have that awkward moment, and I was oh, like, "Oh, yeah. are they trying to insinuate there's something there?" You know. Yeah, I didn't like that part. No. Oh, I liked that. I've been reading uh, a lot like of Jane Austen lately, so I'm probably, I'm probably <laughs> used to that pent-up frustration that they all want to say something and they have to be polite. I think that's just the female prerogative, isn't it, Nakia? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I would have been burnt as a witch. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we have you on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> that asked my opinion, I'd bloody give it. <laughs> Uh, Now they meet up with Edison and Edison states that he gave Tesla a job when he arrived in the US, but Tesla was able to come to the US because he already worked for Edison. Yes, he did. In Paris, wasn't it? Croatia, Serbia, Croatia, yeah. He didn't really have an accent in the episode, did he? No, no, he had a very faint accent, yeah. By 1903, he'd been in the US for about 10 years, so. He started working for one of um, Edison's companies in Paris, and then when the foreman was moved over to the US from Paris. He said, okay, but can you bring Tesla as well? Because he's one of my best men. And so that's how he came to the US. So he was he was already working for Edison. In During this time, just was there telephone communication or was it telegraphing? So they, But they had something quicker than, you know, making management decisions from wherever he was in yeah, New York. Yeah, but it was all, it was all wired. So yeah. they could send messages quickly to say, right, you are now over here. I'm just thinking of Edison running. Probably not super. That, that's pretty thing. forward thinking, you know, to have like offices around the world all the way back then. Well, they could send they could send mail, which would go by boat. Yeah, yeah and they would they, they would have had telegraph, so. wouldn't they? Yeah, that's what I was wondering. I think so. Yeah. I think, so but it would have been wired. It would have all wi- been wired. Yeah. Yeah. I feel oh, like yeah. Wired. Yeah. 
I feel like the mail would probably go a lot faster back then than it does now. No, regular yeah. I mean, it was still all coaches. And so he got the message through the, um, the, the, the mail to yeah. come to New York. But he York. sent a pigeon. Yeah, <laughs> where we, there we go. That's where the pigeon thing started, <laughs> all the way back then. Yeah, so Morse code and the telegraph were developed in the 1830s and 40s. After Tesla quit Edison's company, uh, the first company he had went under and Tesla did indeed dig ditches for $2 a day until he could get back on his feet again. God, imagine so, doing that work for two for? bucks. Was that to lay cable? Like, oh, he just, like, no, he just worked for another company. Yeah, he yeah. basically just did whatever work yeah, he could right. do to stop from going bankrupt. <laughs> this was this was a guy who had basically helped invent the induction engine by then, like mm. helped improve street lamps. Like he was already a pretty famous inventor by then and he was digging ditches. Just All he needed he was money. someone with money to champion him and he would have... Changed the world. Well, Westinghouse did most of most of that, but yeah, obviously, once he started coming up with ideas that weren't profitable, he basically invested in the ones that that could deal with what he was what, what Westinghouse was dealing in, which was you know electronics and capitalism. Damn it, capitalism. Yep. Uh, does anyone want to talk about Edison and being chased by the scorpion aliens? Uh, no. I, that was that I was. That I want to. I want to. Before we get to the scorpions, yeah, yeah. there's a few things I'm thinking about. All right. When the doctor came in. Just before they went to the train. No, it was after they went to the train. They'd come back to his office or whatever in New York and there's the dude with the red eyes following him around who oh, yeah, died. Yeah. He's coming into the room and she's like stand back holding this like pilot light at him or whatever it was. Like this, oh, little, this, kind of like this kid's yeah. torch. Yeah, like I'm like, <laughs> what is she doing? The and, that, and in the train she looked at it and then something <laughs> fell off the roof onto yeah, that yeah, thing's yeah. head. And I'm like, what is this thing? She's like, Durr. <laughs> I love anyway. it. I love it. <laughs> anyway, then later on she said she made it from spoons or yeah, something. Yeah. But she's there and all the guys are behind her and she's like, stay back. And this thing's coming at her. Yeah. And then she just goes, desk. And then it go, <laughs> the desk jumps on. Like it, I think they push the desk. Is that? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. like it's oh, like, yeah, yeah. what is that? She just goes. But that's her big escape is like, yeah, push the desk. desk. <laughs> and then next thing, doo, 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 they're all off. <laughs> Not they, could use, they could use what? the excuse of just like, oh, yeah, it's a female doctor. I was like, get back. It's like a glow-in-the-dark vibrator. Get back. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, oh, yuck, yeah, yuck, yeah, yuck, exactly. yuck. Well, the, I, be, I believe in the original script, the doctor was like, quick, talk about periods. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and then they all left. Oh, that's yeah. just Run away, awesome. run away. <laughs> Today I, um, I'm going to teach you how to use a tampon. Ah! Yeah, so they, I think they pushed the desk at it. So I, I was just thinking we could have looked. I, I didn't get a chance to see the credits at the end or anything but i wondered if the desk got a mention i, was <laughs> I don't know it was a yeah that's right it was a guest desk yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it was originally used in the big bang theory and now it's in it gets all over the place i didn't get I why she used the sonic on the photographer scenes. when the guy took oh, a photo she, in the lab the turned the sonic on i went oh come on put it away now <laughs> that was know, who knows? that was a bit much but when we were in tess um edison's lab and there's a guy who walks in who's dressed like the Grim Reaper, nobody yeah. notices him. And no one notices, yeah. You know, hey, mate, he, who the fuck are you? <laughs> then he's got lightning coming out of his hand. People are working away. I think I would have picked up already that he's in a black cloak and now he's got lightning coming out of his hands, yeah. That oh, was hey, the mate, one how do you went, do that? I went, come on, people, take notice. Is that Nakia when they, they said later on, they said that's not, what's his name? And then they found his body. Yeah. Yeah. That's where? So the yeah. aliens yeah. have been yeah, taking yeah. the forms of people. And then she goes, oh, all of a sudden she comes out with this perfect, hypothesis oh they're emulating the forms of the people who have died and i'm like wow she's got a lot from seeing one of them she's and seeing clever. a body she's like clever. just bang <laughs> like, out of context doctor who just makes no sense yeah <laughs> i love when she comes up with a flammable compound to uh yeah. to keep it and but uh, one of the ingredients she says is oh green stuff because she doesn't want to give people the ingredients on how to make a explosive compound <laughs> and is that when edison also says oh what do you want uh, something what do you want zinc for? And zinc for, like, and then oh. he goes, oh, and she goes, oh. He's like, that could make a lot of money. I don't know. <laughs> now you're starting to think like a scientist or something. Yeah, yeah, I like. Yeah, she yeah. says, now you're thinking like that's, a scientist. Then they set the She's fire. quite rude to him. The doctor sets up a ring of fire. <laughs> burning, <laughs> burning ring of fire. Burning ring of fire. The flames got high. Yeah, and what did it do? He just burns, transported burns, back to the ship. Well, he showed his tail and then transported and then he back. He didn't. Yeah. His tail. She said, "Show your true form." Yeah. Or something like that. And he showed his tail. He's like, "Check out my tail, baby." Yeah. 
I thought it was like a shadowy figure. So that was just. Well, they, they cut away because they didn't out. want to show yeah. the scorpions yet. So they oh, cut okay. away. Yeah, I thought the scorpions were good. I enjoyed them. So then they got onto the. No, was the doctor on the ship yet? No, no. So no. Then, they, then they kidnapped Tesla. Oh, Tesla right. and Yaz they went, went they with him. Because I remember the other thing about the scorpions and stuff, because they were chasing the lady. Chasing Yaz and Edison. And Edison yeah. down the street. Yeah. And, they're, and I'm like. These things are just appearing, and old mate pulls out the old six shooter, yeah, poof, and, one, and <laughs> shot one of the the zombie things. But then my favourite bit, this is my favourite part yeah. of the whole thing, was um, they're running along, and these big massive scorpions that have got six legs because they when things evolve, they evolve with more legs to go over rough terrains. Yeah. So they're running around a straight road, and she knocks over that cart of red oh. rolls. Yeah, that was my favourite <laughs> part of the whole. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and then she's like, things. "Well, <laughs> that'll stop them." Takes a moment to stop <laughs> and goes, "Stop!" And I was like, "Who's forth. writing these action scenes at Doctor Who? I don't know how they're getting paid. This is supposed to be Doctor." Like, meanwhile, some some <laughs> poor like shop seller has just lost his bread for the day. Yeah, this well, I actually tiny, thought maybe tiny it's a uh, you know product placement in shows and <laughs> well, like when this podcast is famous and you're filming it all, there'll be all product placement on the right, table. Yeah. Didn't you? realised that we were sponsored by Pepsi Max. Yeah, exactly. And so I, I actually thought maybe that was like someone that's trying to sell a few bread rolls. I just needed to have their <laughs> somewhere in Eat the series. Bread. They got promised, look, we're going to get your bread into it somehow. Yeah. So just all of a sudden, <laughs> they've got, they've we'll got a sponsorship run past with some Brumbies. bread rolls and I'll knock <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was pretty much Yaz's like, worst idea yeah. ever. I but like, I did like the way the scorpions kept like, running into each other around knocked corners. Over by Doctor Who. Oh, That's yeah, I the love, other thing. I, I love that they just the kept running right. into each other. That's they, yeah, they yeah, I kind of like that because they were so big. For creatures that uh, have so many legs, they just kept running into each other. Like yeah. The only thing that was slowing them down was not the bread rolls. It was each other. They always felt like you were going to get ahead of them. You turned a corner and they're like, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Perhaps that's how the Queen kept them all under like control. They were all just pissed. They're just hammered. <laughs> like she's riding she's around the universe stealing alcohol. The designated driver trying to control a group of that's drunk it, eh? people. It's it is makes sense. Work. It makes sense. It is the worst. She's like, just stay on the ship. She's like, yeah, follow them. Let's go and get like, a yeah, fucking let's meat get, pie. Yeah. Let's follow fucking them. not. Let's go home. No, I want nah, a frozen let's get some coke. Bread rolls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, she threw them down for us. Yay. <laughs> I like the way they go into the tunnel and uh, it's not ladies first, according to Edison. He's the first in there. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, she yeah. I think he was just like, let's get the fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> the Skithra have been stealing Tesla's parts and now they want him to work on their ship. Yaz and Tesla get to work and I was reminded of Iron Man when Tony Stark has to build himself the first Iron Man suit when he was trapped in a cave by yes. terrorists. Wow, that's a good I thought, analogy. oh my God, that would be crazy if you yeah. like, I built a Tesla suit. Pew, pew, pew. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. If he'd stayed on board, he would have been smart enough to do something like Wait, that. Wait, so you're, you're saying Tesla was actually Tony Stark? It's canon now. You've accepted Although it. she would have killed him eventually because she killed that guy for interrupting her. I thought that was funny. Yeah. Yes. Was we needed speaking. an engineer. I was talking. We needed an engineer. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, she's just chewing up scenery. I think it's great. I think she's doing a fantastic job. Yeah, she very much looked like the Emperor of Arachnos. And people have complained that she looks too much like the Arachnos, but I just think that Doctor Who just takes things like the next episode is going to be the rhino creatures, Jadoons. So it's just like, what happens if a rhino was an alien? What happens if a scorpion? was an alien what happens if a statue was an alien yeah it, look it didn't bother me i thought uh, i thought the makeup was fantastic how did she speak like that keeping her mouth so like showing her teeth that I was know. awesome like the, way, the expression yeah. she spoke all the time it reminds me of before i got braces like my teeth pretty much <laughs> so, looked like that maybe it felt like, like that oh no it, it did took I three like hours a... to get into that makeup and prosthetics and yeah everything. it would have yeah. It was insane. But the expression she used, I was like, wow, that's impressive. That's why it was such good makeup because you could see her face. You could see what she was doing. Yeah, her facial expressions, you know, were really clear. So I I really the, enjoyed the, it. The weird glowing things on the side of her head, like her flaps or whatever, giant flaps yeah, yeah, were glowing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things that were right out. Oh, God, you're supposed to look at a face, Adam, not a flap. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Face. But if they give her glowing <laughs> flaps, I'm going to stare at them. <laughs> well, it took Dooney a few seconds to get that joke. No, I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to appear crass, Beck. <laughs> I was me, ready me, said me flaps. Me and Nikia, I just said it straight away. Do you know how the vetting in my brain when another man says, oh, the way her flaps looked, I'm like, 
Like, that's all I can think of. Shut us down. Protrusion. Well, now you know why I'd be burnt as a witch. If the queen of the Skithra evolved bioluminescent flaps, then that's up to them, okay? Well, that's that's true. And ladies, if your flaps are bioluminescent, please go see your local kind of... Anyway. Don't colour them in with highlighter. (laughs) (laughs) Don't care how bored you are, not good... (laughs) Nail polish is right out. That's yeah. such oh, a God. mother comment. You yeah, don't be colouring those in. All right, that's the last. <laughs> what if you do keep within the lights? <laughs> oh, oh look, I'm just going down to Bunnings to man, get some flaps it? paint. Yeah. Paint Surprise bamboos. your man. Paint that's your yellow. flaps it's like highlighter. a bamboo's butt. <laughs> Isn't that just like for jazzling? <laughs> For chaseling, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you don't want them to get lost. Tony's losing. I'm it. leaving this alone. I'm like, don't. Stay, no, stay no, ten no. feet away from it. All right. The Queen of the Skithra, right after saying that the Doctor is clever and will help Tesla, then says that there's no need for her and is about to kill her with her glowing tail. Uh yeah, that that threw me. And now yeah, we're back to the up. glowing it tails. Up, yeah, but she goes, flaps. "Oh, you're yeah, clever. She... You should help. You should help uh, uh, because Tesla." Because you're talking about, you know, we just had a bit of a thing on her flaps. The next yeah. thing, and her tail then, becomes yeah. a and it starts going as though it's going to shoot something and then she goes but the doctor stops us she's like hey the doctor tail, you think tail he's tail clever boxer. you want to know tail yeah tail i know boxer. but the thing is with the the skithra <laughs> queen <laughs> is she's like a parent who doesn't follow through isn't she i'm going to kill everyone and you first oh what am i going to do now oh i'm just going to kill the doctor no i'm yeah, not i'm going to kill the yeah. ads no i'm not well it would be a short it'd stuff be a short episode shortly. if she goes i'm going to kill everyone and then she kills tesla and everyone's like oh fuck what do we do now i've always always wanted that to happen in every Doctor Who episode. <laughs> Just like if things actually happened that way in Doctor Who, it would be so much shorter of an episode. It's yeah. all it takes, isn't it, Nikki? It's just one follow through, one murder. And That's then the rest right. Of you only have to kill one of your kids yeah, and the rest of them be, fall in line. The rest of them will fall straight into line. Right. That's it. <laughs> She gets it. Next time, every time you ever mention your tail, they're like, yep, yeah. nope. No all right, yep, all right, Medea. Medea. <laughs> I think that's for a different reason, though. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm why, kidding. Why does this keep getting so dark? Oh, it's good. Oh. <laughs> I mean, you originally had three kids. Isn't that right, Nakia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four. Well, I always had this. Yeah. I knew one of them would be a dud. So poor poor, poor Sessie. Doctor finds Harold Green's camera and uses the flash to buy them some time to teleport out. Tesla is pissed that Edison is in his lab but he forgets that when he sees inside the TARDIS remarking the internal dimensions transcends the external, i.e. it's bigger on the inside. Yeah, the old inside out. But I love the fact that Tesla gets it and Edison doesn't. He just wants to know how to make money out of it. Yeah, Jed Graham's bloody got it in for Edison, hasn't he? Oh, yeah. I actually had something, that was the other thing you just reminded me, was when that happened, I was like, the TARDIS, you know, because I didn't know that much about it, but then when he said it's bigger on the inside, it's like a time travel, but what's its actual class? It's not like the phone box that it looks like. It's a residence or something. It's it? like a spaceship. Whenever you go somewhere new, it's supposed to change itself to look like something that's in that area, but it got stuck on being a... Because I was thinking it's got to be like a um, like a property developer's dream. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was funny. Yeah. You could have hundreds of yeah, them so. in enormous houses. So what would it look like in places like the valley or Narang or surfers? i tell you what, people wouldn't complain about uh, loud Loud music because the TARDIS would shield you from the loud music. Maybe not being able to open the windows would be a bit of a downside. Yeah, that might be better. <laughs> yeah, you open up a TARDIS as a bar and everyone comes in and you're like, oh, I can fit like billions of yeah. people in the <laughs> whole earth in here. <laughs> Keep coming. <laughs> Don't press. Oh God, now we're on Mars. Good one. Yeah, well done. <laughs> well Damn done, DJ. Derek. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the Skithra Queen threatens to destroy everyone on Earth if Tesla isn't headed over, so just as quickly as he's on the TARDIS, Tesla storms out. He's only on there for a couple of minutes. Well, and where's he going to sacrifice himself? Why doesn't he just stay on the TARDIS? Because she doesn't like, I thought he'd walk out and she'd no, get but him straight she, away. Didn't she take him off? We, I feel like we skipped something. She was about, the Skithra Queen was about to shoot the Doctor. Mm, and then she uses mm. the camera flash to... That was the bit. Her, that yeah. was the bit I was gonna. That was funny. The camera w- seemed to be, even though the Skithra had it, who's been travelling around universes and times, picking up what they want. They seem to have a modern day camera for where Tesla and Edison and everybody well, was think... set at that time. That old big 
I'm like, why didn't they bring up an iPhone? Flash? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think it's been... insinuated that they <laughs> they insin- killed the the photographer and they. Oh, it's the shiny. Oh, I they missed were, the kit. Yeah. Ah, it's the Skithra took the camera. Yeah, because they... um, yeah, yeah. because Harold Green is is one of the people who tries to kill Edison, and then yeah, later right on he goes, oh. "Oh, Harold Green, I used to have I missed that. dinner with his wife." That's why they got that camera, and that's why she m- didn't know what it was because it hadn't been on there very long. Probably. Yeah, I mean, why the yeah. Skithra is 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 around in 1903 mm. England? Uh, They're uh, traveling all I don't know, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. she's I'm looking for Daniel. Tesla because oh. he was the one who sent the message yeah. back from to meant. Mars, back to Mars. Oh, yeah. They were hanging out at Mars, yeah. And and Gray, uh, Yaz and the doctor look, look miffed at Tesla when he's like, yeah, I responded. And it's like they would have done the exact same thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he had no idea what he was responding. I love the way he says, I didn't know it got through. Yeah, they never said back and went, we're coming. But then after the camera flash, what was the little thing she kept showing them out of a pocket was that the thing that got them back to Yeah, that Earth? was a, a teleporter. teleporter thing, basically. Short range as opposed to well, long no, range. No, well, I, I don't know, but it, it, we've never seen it before. But basically she was saying, I can't take the, the TARDIS because it would be too conspicuous. So it's this little thing that got them back. And she was looking at it because she said it had to charge. So she looked at it and when oh, it was turned green, Oh, I thought green, she was she showing goes, them. And no, she goes, no. okay, it's oh, ready to go. Oh, she kept looking at it. No, no, no she was... I've got a stash, guys. Yeah, I thought she was showing uh, Jazz. Or, or yes. No, the, yeah, yes. Yeah. Her, yeah, right. Yeah, you know how when you want to send something on your phone and you keep looking at it, oh, charge, hurry up and charge, hurry up and charge. That's <laughs> yes, yeah. uh, The Doctor and Tesla will set up the tower. Ryan, Graham and Dorothy will find whatever they can d- use to defend Wardenclyffe and Edison and Yaz will get people off the streets so the plan is in action. She, that's when they got back off the ship. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's after she they got said, off the right, ship. And they realised the that they had to kill was, the Queen. Did, yeah, and didn't they say, she said, I'm going to have to put the shields down though. The, to, to, to run the tower she had to put the shields yeah, of the Yeah, so Tardis she had the, the Tardis shields on so the Skithra yeah, couldn't get in. Yeah, and so um, that was the big thing. Yep. But then as soon as it was charged There's it's, always a risk they've got to take. It's never like, don't worry, guys, yeah, the shields and the tower to are totally we'll shoot fine. shoot them down. Yeah, yeah. no, we've got to do one or the other. That would be no fun if they could just do it that way, wouldn't it? That's right. Ryan finds Tesla's prototype death ray. Nice yeah, where's like, Graham's uh, laser, laser shoes? Joke. Did he throw them away after Spike? Yeah, he, he must have. Maybe they ran out of juice. Oh, maybe. Yeah, Danny's just like, what? <laughs> they did a spy <laughs> adventure and he had some laser shoes. So, And they shot lasers. It was pretty cool. Shoes with freaking laser beams. Yeah, freaking laser beams shooting uh, shots. And the Skithra with freaking laser, laser beams, beams on there. I get that reference. Sharks with freaking laser <laughs> shoes on their heads. <laughs> Uh, the Skithra start attacking Wardenclyffe, but the Tardis shields keep them at bay until it's ready to shoot the tower. Is that what they're called, those things? Wardenclyffe? No, no. Wardenclyffe is the name of the, the tower. <laughs> oh, I thought <laughs> you said the that. Not the shoes. The, oh. <laughs> Wardenclyffe. It's not, it's not a very scary name, is it? Hello, I'm Wardenclyffe, the monster. <laughs> No, he was he was insinuating that the shoes are called Warden <laughs> Oh, right. <laughs> Branded. <laughs> no, no, they were they were, they were Nikes. I don't know. No, no they were Warden Cliffs. <laughs> Hello, I'm wearing my Warden Cliffs today. How about you? Yeah, I'm wearing the Warden Cliffs. They were Smith one. and Western Cliffs. Oh, Graham tries the death ray, but it doesn't work. Oh, no. No, no one could Christ. see that coming. Oh, no. It was just going to be so easy if the death ray could work, but then... The Skithra bust through, but don't attack. The fortress was pretty shitty, wasn't it? What, lots of boxes and a few nails? They don't really have any weapons. Oh, well, I mean... Uh, Edison's got his gun. Yeah, no. yeah. There couldn't be yeah, a piano lying gun. around. Five or shots left, or only three. All the all the Hoobie gang have to do is blast the ship while the Queen is still on it, and the hive mind Skithra will retreat. Except it turns out the Squithra, Squithra, the Squithra, the Squithra cream, uh, the Skithra Queen, <laughs> Squithra cream, yeah, was what's that treat, Adam? I don't no, it's know. a sort of cream. <laughs> yeah. It treats glowing flaps. Yeah, oh, hey. I was, like, hey. oh, was hey. going to say, I'm here thinking, you rub yes. it on your flaps. You rub it on your glowing. Oh, glow even the glowing, more. <laughs> the glowing fungi <laughs> we see. On the upside, they're squeaky clean. <laughs> <laughs> Except it turns out that the Skithra Queen has decided to take a trip to Wardenclyffe. Wearing a warden clothes. This was the bit where where they said they're not coming in, they're not attacking, and then the doctors just seem to know instinctively or intuitively, oh, that's because the queen's not on the ship or something. Yeah. And then she appeared yeah. at the door. Well, the, the and then the queen that? says that just she's just... told them not to attack because she wants to kill them first. Yeah. She goes, "I, ha- as the queen, I have the pleasure of killing you." She asks the doctor if she's ever seen a dead planet, and the doctor rep- replies, "Yeah, yeah, loads." Well, her home yeah, planet? No, no. <laughs> yeah, 
Her home planet's gone. Yeah, lords. <laughs> yeah, lords. Yeah, lords. Uh, but also Scaro, where the Daleks were from. Uh, there was a, a the specials a when the bus the went planet. through. That was the dead planet. Orphan fifty five. Orphan fifty five. <laughs> oh god, that was <laughs> episode just before. Don't talk Earth about that show. Actually, do you, do you want to know the funny thing is they haven't left Earth yet. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they were on Earth for the first two episodes. In the third episode, it turned out they were also on Earth in the future. Future and Earth. And in this episode, they're on Earth. And then next episode, they're on Earth. Oh, great. We're going to have a whole series where they don't go to a, uh, a foreign planet. Oh, no, I want another planet. Yeah. Budget's not big enough. <laughs> yeah, stick to boring old Earth. She goes for the teleporter device, but the Skithra Queen, remembering the Flash, takes it from her. The Doctor Sonics it, and its Queen teleports back to the ship. What was that thing called that... Coil. It was just yeah, like the teleporter. That was, thing, it, but yeah. it was different to the one she had in a pocket earlier. Well, I think it was connected to the bangle because I think she had the bangle ah, on her hand when she. Okay. Yeah, it's not really well explained. So there was a bangle. That's why it looked that coil funny thing. That was yeah. the bangle she took, and then as soon as she took it, she. I thought that was a good a, a good fake because I I actually thought that's what she was going to do. She was going to try and teleport them out and. Then at the look of disappointment on her face when the Skithra Queen takes it off her and then she turns around to, no, I wanted you to have it. I liked that because I went, oh, shit, she's been foiled. And then she wasn't foiled. Boom, double cross. She's been highlighted. Tesla starts the tower and the Skithra ship is hit by a massive bolt of energy. All Skithra are called back to the ship, which disappears. Mm. It doesn't blow up. It just shoots <laughs> off into the distance. Um, I the question Skithra that. Again. It doesn't blow up then, so she could be back. I interpreted that as... The ray was cooking them, so they bailed. Yeah, that's oh, what I okay. thought. Went, yeah. Phew, exit, it be, stage it could left. Be bad. <laughs> but how do they know? That, how does the doctor know that they won't come back for Tesla later? <laughs> she doesn't. She maybe oh, okay. she'll just get called back. She's Fair like, enough. "All right, enjoy it. Bye." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. She looks at her history book and she's like, what? Still dies penniless? Fantastic. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to do it. <laughs> Everything's in so order. We've got that sorted. Yeah, yeah. history. Yeah, it didn't she's come like, back. She introduces the group to her, to Tesla, and then tells them, oh, yeah, by the way, no one recognizes him for, uh, you know, almost 100 years. And also, uh, he dies penniless and, yeah. everyone, and no one gives a shit. Bye. Yeah, yeah. I love that. It was so yeah, A broken so man. Clean and Don't cold. worry about it. <laughs> Edison offers Tesla a job but he turns him down and Tesla bids farewell to the Hoobie gang and proclaims the future is mine. I yeah, liked that line. they the present but the future yeah, is mine. Yeah, it was nice. And she said, what did she say to him? Don't stop. You're going to change the world. Something. Is there something? Because he, he wants to check out the TARDIS and she goes, well, you don't need to check that's out the right. TARDIS. You've You're going to create your, your own, own things. That's and right. Doesn't wipe their memory. All right, well, that's it. Is there anything else anyone else would like to talk about? I just want to say that there's a couple of lines in it that really cracked me up. The high five, uh, this Ain't our first rodeo. You've never been to a rodeo. The ACDC. I thought it was really well filmed and I, I really enjoyed yeah. it and I didn't feel like it was shoved down my throat. I just sat back and enjoyed it. What was the guy that said he was a bus driver or something that oh, helps? That's Graham. The, Graham. I liked his line to um, Edison. They seem to have it, but he said, Oh, I had a bloke at my old depot like you. And you don't ever take an interest with in someone like that unless there's a payoff yeah. coming. I like those sort of lines. Yeah, yeah it that, was good. Graham was full of those. He's like this. He's not the cleverest guy. He could, didn't know what Tesla had invented, but he's kind of got his morals. He's like, oh, you stay. But you. He's the really down to earth, feet on the ground kind of everyman, and that's what I really like about him. Sometimes he's comic relief, and sometimes he's the heart. Uh, he's a good character. I felt that a lot. So Graham was married to Ryan's. Oh, yeah, so, so Ryan is his adopted grand ah, grandchild, yeah. So that's why he's hanging around. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. then Yaz is together. just some rando. Yeah. Yaz, is, Yaz went Smart. to school with Ryan. So. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. That was from the first episode. Oh, okay. That was too long ago. That was like two years ago, man. <laughs> and I thought there was some good banter between Tesla and Yaz up on the spaceship too. I thought that that was good. She's, she's like, I thought you were supposed to be clever sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he's like, all right, all right, mate. <laughs> Uh, all right, as we always do, we like to give the episode a score out of five. Who would like to go first? Nakia, would you like to go first? Uh, yes, I will. So after I'm still, we're still getting over Orphan 55. So I went into this nervous thinking, oh, my God, it's going to be rubbish. And it wasn't. I enjoyed it. It's not a classic, um, but it's a little more to me than a bog standard Doctor Who. I would watch it again. Found it easy to watch the third time. So it's a 3.5 from me. Dooney, would you like to give it a score out of five? Yeah, I will. I feel a bit under um, unqualified, underqualified no, to fine. give you it can... a score. But I would say I was going to give it like 
in the first half, probably a two, maybe uh, luckily a three. But then there was the desk that might have got it to a three. But then, of course, there were the bread rolls. And the bread. <laughs> so, yep, the bread rolls getting knocked over. Right, that's that's a – I'm a new – I'll be giving generous scores, but a four. A four? I give it a four because of the bread roll work by <laughs> Jeff. Yes, yeah. yep. You're going to stop scorpions, mate. Go to the bakery. <laughs> They will never chase you in a bakery. Go to your local Bromley I'm surrounded by donuts and bread rolls. Take me on, Martians. <laughs> they have the PST, PTSD from that yeah. time they were in New York. Oh, God. All the celiac Martians in there. Uh, I really enjoyed this episode. I thought it was a really good one and I learned things about Nikola Tesla. I s- sort of had a little bit of an overview, but like it wasn't really something that was taught in Australian schooling. Yeah. Like our, our schooling sort of focused more on other things yeah. to do than that. It was definitely a lot better than Orphan 55, hands down a lot better. And I loved the guy who played Nikola Tesla as well. I thought he's a really good actor. So I'm going to be agreeing with Dooney and saying a four. Okay. All right. Fantastic. And I agree with the two of you. I'm going to give it a four. I really enjoyed it. I was wavering between a three and a four. I wasn't sure. And talking about it, my biggest issue with the episode is that the Scythra are very forgettable. They're not great monsters. No one's going to be like, oh, I can't wait for the Scythra to be back. Like, the Queen does a really good job, but the rest of them are just kind so of different blah, you know. Well. So I don't think they're going to be a very memorable uh, monster for the rest of the, the series. But, uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed the episode. Tesla did really well. I love Tesla. Tesla's my boy. I love yeah, the portrayals of Tesla likeable. and Edison. Yeah, I thought it was really good. So the acting was superb. It's the poib. And do you feel like Jodie is the Doctor now? Do you feel like she's found her stride? Yeah, yeah. Definitely in comparison to the, her last series. I feel like at the end of the last series she was still, even then, trying to find her feet with what she was doing. But I think now she's definitely you know, getting there and it's more believable. Like the stories that she's had this this series, I feel like besides Orphan 55 <laughs> have been a lot better. It sounds like Or- Orphan 55 was pretty memorable. All of yeah. you uh, mentioned it. It, it, it wasn't, it wasn't to, completely to forget. terrible, but it was, so it was bad. the worst out when of the Nakia said earlier, episode, yeah, yeah, she didn't like it to was make just, you nervous to watch the next one. Well, it was such a terrible script. It was terrible makeup. It was terrible. Oh. It was just, oh, it was awful. Needed bread rolls. Don't, yeah. Needed, needed That's all anything. you need. It was fun to talk about, though. No. Bad episodes are always fun to talk about. Okay, so Dooney, we told you at the beginning we wanted to know your Time Lord name. Oh, be- sorry, before you do, oh, um, okay. we polled our listeners. Got a got a smaller response. People are still waiting to watch the episode. We got, we got uh, eight people who responded. Uh, we got a couple of others who said they didn't uh, see the episode as well. Haven't seen it yet. But basically the average score from them is 4.85. Wow. Uh, 4.87, sorry. So they really, really enjoyed this episode. Yeah. So, Gosh, I must yeah. be get, so, becoming okay. a hard yep. marker. Okay, Dooney, Time Lord name. So the, the point of your Time Lord name is the Doctor gave herself the name Doctor because she wanted to do no harm, bring care, bring peace, be helpful. What do you think your Time Lord name would be? Uh <laughs> The lunchbox. <laughs> the lunchbox. <laughs> what the hell is the lunchbox? I love it. That's so great. Oh, you're a real lunchbox, the aren't lunch you? Lunchbox. <laughs> well, I, explain. Like, I just because when Adam mentioned that, and, I, and I'm glad you explained it better. But when he mentioned, you know, the nerd and the commander and the artist, I was like, kind of, yeah. But you've said it now more in depth. Something you aspire to be, or something you you are. I, I got given a name one time by a um, tribal Indian thing and they gave me the Laughing Pecker <laughs> as, a, as a spiritual name. I remember that. It's like dead set. Like a, a, did, did yeah. pecker, does pecker mean the same thing in there? Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay, it's a type right. of bird, like a woody woodpecker. Oh, okay. Woodpecker. I thought I was talking about but, No, yeah, but the double really. entendre yeah, is deliberate. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. The lunchbox, because maybe like you're not sure that it can be deceiving when it's closed. You don't know what's in it. So you can be dreading it based on your previous experiences of lunch boxes, or you can be really hopeful, like, oh, I wonder what's in there today. Half the time the fucking thing's empty anyway. <laughs> so it's just <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And also though, lunch boxes don't just have to have lunch in them. They can hold all they're, – they're such a useful item. <laughs> And if you don't just throw it away, like we throw all the shit away these oh, days, yeah. they're you reusable, keep it, you wash handy. it up, you do it all again the next yeah. day for the rest of your life. I am 
in my 40s <laughs> and I still have a lunchbox that I had before I was 10. Wow. So like I've got no idea. And I still use it. We turn up in the TARDIS. We're having an adventure. What does the lunchbox do on well, the Well, you don't, you don't know What's until you start, That's do it, you? Mate. I can do anything. I'll feed you. That's the very first and first and foremost. And what's our theme song? What's what's your theme song? Oh, that's a good question. That was what you. Oh, that oh, one yeah. I yeah. want to. Yeah. I want you guys to tell me yeah. first, yeah. actually. Oh, what's your theme I song? Asked. No, I want yeah. you guys to oh, tell you want, me. Oh, okay. Um, Just as you say so for any listeners, is as you enter a room in any situation in life, if you had a theme song, what would it be? I don't know. Um, Nakia, do you have do you yeah, have yours Nikia? ready? It's really hard. You know, I mean, my first thought is, um, you know, dun da 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 dun dun da da dun, but. That's not really me. Yeah, it'd probably be something like the Woody Woodpecker song or something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think mine would probably be like the popcorn. That's a good one. <laughs> both upbeat. Both of us. Yeah, yeah. I thought if I had to think on of one for you, it would probably be All Star. <laughs> God, I would get sick real quick. Hey, now, you're an all-star. Uh, Even more so than popcorn, <laughs> really. I like that. One of those. Beck? I'm not oh, God. Down. <laughs> for, um, for your podcast, what's your theme song? I just like the power play of the song. But like one of my favorite songs is "Sledgehammer" by Peter Gabriel. Yes. Yeah. I, I just I just feel so pa- yeah I just feel so powerful with that song. So that would definitely be mine. Okay. Sledgehammer. All right. oh, Peter, like Ga- Peter Gabriel is my favorite singer. So. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> and welcome to the Peter Gabriel bum, podcast. Bum, bum, bum. And Dooney, what's your theme song? I, I've asked this before. Um, I got a couple, but uh, f- most of the time I reckon it would be um, Dave Dobbin. Ba, da, da, ba, 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 uh, da, da, da. Not you're a slice of heaven. No, no. slice of heaven. Oh. I like the idea of that. Slice of heaven. Yeah. <laughs> there yeah. we go, Nakia just got it. I, was thinking <laughs> I did. I said Dave Dobbin. <laughs> yeah. Or the other one would be EMF Unbelievable. Well, <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, I get that. I get that. <laughs> All right, Dooney, thank you so much for joining us. Do you have a comedian page? I do. It's called Dooney. Dooney 101 or Dooney LOL. I'm, I'm real active on the socials. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, yeah. but if you want to follow Dooney yeah. and check out what he's up to, check out Dooney on Facebook. Uh, you can catch up what he's, what he's up to. Yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot for having me. I oh, know. Thank you so much for joining Here us. Here we are. Thanks though, for finally yeah, coming. <laughs> even though. <laughs> it takes time, but more, it was worth more, it. Yeah, it's <laughs> taken almost, uh, almost two hours, but we finally got you to come. So. <laughs> I sweated so hell? much. I don't know if I could get there. I know. Uh, Nikia, All I had to do was put a bit of highlighter on. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. I think we've got, all got a little bit of a natural reference. glow up in Queensland. <laughs> oh, we- <laughs> <laughs> Took you a while. Nakia, your plugs? No, nothing to plug at the moment. Just the bath. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm still I mean, trying to settle myself in way, up okay. here. So. Uh, as always, you can follow Adam O'Sullivan Comedian on Facebook and visit thenerdinfinite.com. Get the word out. Dooney's suggestion is Bald Rock Tenterfield. Yeah. And an item is a drink bottle. Because look at it. Oh, there so you go. So cool, it's, it's got quite, little rockets on yeah, it and numbers. Yeah, it was the numbers. geekiest thing I had. I bought it along <laughs> especially today and no one no. made reference to oh, it. I'm so no. sorry. It's a little tin, whatever, cool water bottle. Yeah. Yeah. A little, has metal, water thermo- bottle with little rockets metal thermostat on it. that tastes like pennies. <laughs> you can take a picture of it for the episode. D4WH is on Facebook. Give a page a like for updates and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at D4WHpod. We'll post questions and polls and would love your input and feedback. Feedback. Rate and review us on iTunes, recommend us on Facebook, and follow us on Podbean. We are also now available on Spotify and Stitcher. Tell your friends about us, and if you see someone on the street wearing a Doctor Who shirt, politely go up to them and suggest our podcast. Get the word out. You might be on Bald Rock Tenterfield having a drink from your drink bottle after a exactly. hard walk around the big old Bald Rock it's that a great you're walk. trying to make come. Oh. <laughs> What? <laughs> but then suddenly as you take a drink, your water bottle turns into a space rocket and you go shooting up into the air. Uh, and just before you lose consciousness from a lack of oxygen, you let go and you plummet to Earth. Uh, meanwhile, the thoughts of D4WH are in your head. There we go. So All please the get the word down. out for D4WH by plummeting to Earth. <laughs> That's what that was for. That's what that was for. <laughs> as always, keep searching the skies for the Doctor. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Cheerio. This has been a production of The Nerd Infinite. And then the sound of dragons spitting fire and stuff. What? Why are you looking at me like that?